Konnichiwa! Welcome to Comic Tropes. I'm your host, Chris. When it comes to popular manga, there are two titles at the top. There is One Piece, there's My Hero Academia, and then there's everything else. Those two reign supreme. Now, we've already done an episode about One Piece. Today, I wanted to talk about My Hero Academia and what makes it so special, why I'm a fan, what it does well and uniquely. Uh, it involves a lot of superhero action. It also involves a lot of melodrama between the characters. So in that way, it's actually very similar in some ways to superhero comics here in America. But at the same time, it is shown in manga. So it's aimed at a young male audiences. It comes out weekly in Shonen Jump, and it shares a lot of the tropes typical to uh, Shonen manga. So we're going to talk about those two sides of it, how it balances, uh, what the creator Kohei Horikoshi does well, and uh, without any further ado, let's get into a, a Japanese frame of mind. I've got a bunch of Japanese candy. Look at how intense this one is. Look at that guy saying, oh, I want to see if I also have that uh, reaction. Oh, could I? Let's see. So minty! Let's get into it. Artist and writer Kohei Horikoshi broke into the industry with one-shots in 2007 and 2008, and then successfully launched two weekly series beginning in 2010 and in 2012, before he reached his biggest success with My Hero Academia in 2014. All three of the ongoing series were published in Japan's most popular weekly comics anthology, Shonen Jump. The manga has been collected into 23 Tankabon volumes in Japan, and so far 20 of them have been released here in North America. As of last December, it had over 20 million copies published. That far surpasses anything published here these days. At the same time, Horikoshi-san has said that he was inspired by and enjoys a lot of American superhero comics, especially Marvel comics. And I think that shows. In a lot of ways, My Hero Academia reminds me of X-Men comics, specifically the New Mutants comics of the 1980s. All right, let's have some more uh, amazing Japanese candy. We've got some sort of ice cream candy here. It's a little ice cream cone. Hmm. Hmm. Sweet. Let's keep going with the sweet. How about some sweet manga? In the world of My Hero Academia, 80% of the population began to be born with superpowers about six generations ago, known as quirks. Some are mundane, but many are powerful. In order to keep order, at least in Japan, where the stories take place, superheroes are licensed and regulated by the government, and there are schools where students with quirks can train to get a license to become a professional superhero. Our main character and viewpoint into this world is middle schooler Izuku Midoriya. He was born without a quirk, but his biggest dream is to become a great hero like his idol, All Might, the number one hero in the world. The overall theme of the book is what it takes to be a hero. Midoriya is book smart, a bit shy or timid, but braver than even he realizes. His instincts are to help and to head into danger without thinking about it. That is actually very plausible. I was reading up for this episode on what makes people act heroically, and in many cases, it's when people don't have time to think ahead about the consequences of their action. They just react. It's just chocolate. A recent study by the Yale University psych students that they published in the Plus One Medical Journal indicates that the most common outcome for people that have acted heroically is when they didn't have time to think ahead about the impact of their actions. They acted first and reacted to what they'd done later. Similarly, Radiolab recently conducted a survey, and what they found out was that the people that act heroically are not necessarily more empathic. In fact, if they have a lot of empathy, they can actually feel fear about putting themselves in a similar dangerous situation. Instead, those that act heroically display what Radiolab called automatic kindness, because they were raised in a loving environment and their instinct is simply to act kindly. If this is accurate, perhaps the biggest hero of My Hero Academia is Midoriya's single mother. Midoriya proves his courage when he rushes into danger to save his classmate, Bakugo, from a supervillain. This despite Bakugo being a bully towards Midoriya. 
All Might witnesses this selflessness and bestows upon Midoriya his quirk. It's a quirk that gifts super strength beyond anyone else and can be passed on to others. Midoriya becomes the ninth person to inherit the power, and All Might becomes his mentor. He's a scrawny guy who uses the power to transform himself into a big superhero that exists as a beacon of hope. His look mirrors that of an American superhero, and he's named his moves after U.S. states. All Might was grievously wounded in a battle, and he's been hiding the fact that he can only be a superhero for three hours a day, and his time is actually growing shorter. So he's been searching for someone worthy of inheriting his power. Not only does he give Midoriya his power, but he also helps him get into the prestigious high school for superheroes, UA. Midoriya joins class 1A, which has 20 students, including him. We're also introduced to about six teachers. This large cast is both a positive and a challenge for the book. The positive is that it's giving us a lot of interesting personalities and a lot of different varying motivations for why someone would want to be a hero. The challenge is that we're constantly being introduced to new students, teachers, supervillains, police, all sorts of characters. That doesn't always give everybody room to grow, and growth is a huge trope in shonen manga. Mmm, pika pika. Shonen manga that's successful gives its characters room to grow and essentially level up. Dragon Ball, Naruto, and One Piece are all examples of this. But none of them had casts close to as large as My Hero Academia. Priority is always given to developing Midoriya, but there are other key characters. This includes his new best friend, super speedster Ida, who is studious and wants to be a hero like his older brother. There's Ururaka, who can make things lose their gravitational pull and wants to be a hero to help provide for her poor family. There's a wide range of characters who can range from blunt to slow to perverted. What's great about Midoriya is that he starts so timid. That gives him a long path to go to become a hero. He's already brave, but he has to be more than that if he wants to be a great hero. He needs to be able to be a beacon of hope by being confident in public. He needs to learn to control his incredible power. Initially, he can only use a very small percentage, or he seriously injures himself. But Midoriya has studied heroes his whole life, and he has the creativity to think of using his powers in new and innovative ways. He's also talented at analyzing a weakness of an opponent, or how best to collaborate with other powers. My Hero Academia is able to analyze what makes a hero through the viewpoint of Midoriya and his classmates. It's also displayed by the different types of opponents they face. There is an ongoing threat in the form of upcoming supervillain Shigaraki, who manages a league of villains. He's bizarrely covered in hands, and if he touches you, he can turn you into dust. But he mostly uses his leadership and strategic skills to become the top villain and destroy everything he despises. Personality-wise, he's the opposite of Midoriya, a being filled with hate. The founder of the League of Villains was a man known as All for One, who can steal other quirks for himself. While he was defeated by All Might, he is the one who permanently injured All Might. Another key early villain is Stain. Stain believes that most heroes are hypocrites who are only acting heroically to earn a living or for selfish reasons. He brands himself the Hero Killer and aims to murder superheroes. He actually lets Midoriya live because he believes Midoriya may be the rare exception of a truly selfless hero. There are all sorts of other villains along the way, from former Yakuza crime lords that utilize super-powered henchmen, to Gentle, the gentleman thief who likes to steal things or maybe interrupt events to steal attention for himself. Uh, it's interesting because each of them tests Midoriya in a different way. Sometimes it's testing his moral convictions, other times it's testing purely his physical prowess. Uh, I'm going to test myself with the Candy Smile Project having one of their crayons. Candy crayons. Mmm. Surprisingly fruity. Midoriya is selfless. 
He throws away chances to be successful in school to save lives. He works extra hard to make others happy. And even though we're 20 volumes into his story, he's barely reached the ability to use 20% of his power. As he gets stronger, he'll be able to face bigger threats. He has to make it through school, master his powers, and grow into an adult. That's a huge trope that's expected in shonen manga, growth. And by creating a character who is both powerless and timid when we first meet him, it gives him a very long potential journey to become the greatest hero. It's also part of why Midoriya is so popular. He's not a typical hero. He's smart, kind, funny when he awkwardly mutters to himself about his studies, and has tons of potential. He's just likable. And that's a big part of why My Hero Academia is so enjoyable. You want to spend time with Midoriya and his friends. Other tropes in shonen manga include friendship and battles. By setting superheroes in school, it easily tackles all of these elements. With all the characters in the title as well as its premise, this manga has a lot of world building. It could be overwhelming to explain how and why generations of people with quirks emerged and how the world responded. But the story mostly breezes past these implications with the occasional chapters that will explore how the police work with superheroes or how superheroes get reimbursed. It's just not the most important element of the story. Instead, it's about the characters. And again, that's both the strength and the challenge for the book. Sometimes the title can focus a lot on some of Midoriya's classmates and give them room to grow. The character designs are all very different. They're incredibly creative. They're brilliant. The artwork by Horikoshi-san is gorgeous. Also gorgeous? Tiny little monkey jigsaw puzzle piece candy. Chewy. Gross. The characters are easily identifiable from one another. The action sequences really pop with energy. The artwork from panel to panel in big battles is clear to read, very detailed, and exciting. There are frequently two-page spreads of huge action moments that are beautiful to look at. But this book comes out every week, and it usually features close to 20 pages. 20 pages a week, folks. That is an incredibly demanding schedule. Here in America, we expect our artists to produce 20 pages a month. Now, on the one hand, Horikoshi-san does have assistance. They can help him with everything from inking to backgrounds, and that does speed up the process. But at the same time, come on, almost 20 pages every week? That's a brutal schedule, and there are signs that it's starting to wear down the creator of My Hero Academia. A great example of that was chapter 182. Pages were released that had completely unfinished panels that were sketches, and that's how it was released in Shonen Jump. Horikoshi-san did find time to go back and finish these pages for the Tonkaban release, but the fact that it was originally released in this fashion sounds to me like it should be a wake-up call, and they should start giving My Hero Academia the occasional week off. One Piece takes a break like this pretty regularly. It's the only way for a title to keep going at the top of its game. It's a very popular comic with spin-off titles like Vigilantes and Smash that are done by other creators set in the same universe. The anime is ridiculously successful. The weekly grind of most manga in Japan is pretty brutal. In order to be popular and to not be cut from most Japanese anthology manga uh, magazines, you need to constantly be producing top tier quality art and story because somebody else is always hungry to take your spot. But that whole schedule without any downtime is not really realistic long term. You need to have some breaks because, uh, you know, at best, you're going to have to take a week off or have some artwork that suffers. And at worst, it could lead to health problems. You're staying up late nights just to meet these constant deadlines. Uh, I don't have a perfect solution for that. That is just their industry. It's a, it's a lot different than how comics are produced over here. Uh, so, you know, all I can say is I love the result. I hope that Horikoshi-san stays healthy, 
keeps at this for quite a while. It's a wonderful comic. Uh, I haven't even touched on a lot of supporting characters or certain arcs because there's a lot to cover there, and my goal here isn't to spoil it for you. It's to hopefully give you a new perspective if you're already a reader, or if you're not, maybe interest you in into checking it out. Uh, you know, certainly if you're somebody that hasn't checked out manga before, I actually think this is a fantastic title to start with because it still involves uh, superheroes. So there's some commonalities with American comics. It can help you sort of like get in. But there's a lot to like, from the artwork to the characters. Uh, it's just so fun, it's exciting, it's emotional. There's a lot to like. Also to like, let's have this really cute candy. Uh, let's see, what the heck? Look at that, it's just a white square. This is candy? Oh my gosh. Mmm. Oh, it's like a banana gum or a banana Mentos. Not bad. Also not bad, fan art. Let's take a quick look at what came in this week. Ben Massey created a gorgeous piece here showing me reaching for a Gachapon prize. You can see more work by Ben on his Instagram account. Hi Fam returns with an illustration of me apparently confounded by Black Hammer's hammer. I'm probably thinking, what in tarnation? Lukash Medrick illustrated me as Kaneda from the famous manga and anime Akira. Have you read my mind, Mr. Medrick? Luke Hamilton sent in this great artwork where I'm in the role of Colonel Weird from Black Hammer. Carlos Cepeda created artwork featuring me listing Liefeld's tropes and Carlos's incredibly accurate artwork made to look like a Liefeld superhero. Carlos has more to see on Instagram. Lord Blackburn shows us a world where I've been cloned. Sorry, world. There's more of Lord Blackburn's work on his Instagram page. Finally, Layla E. mentioned the idea for this artwork in one of my live streams and turned it into reality. It's me judging an illusion contest between Loki turning into Scarlet Witch and Mysterio turning into Iron Man. And I'm holding all my precious Mountain Dew knockoffs. I love all that artwork. This is worth mentioning though. I actually stopped drinking Mountain Dew about two weeks ago. I love that stuff, but I decided I didn't want any more of the empty calories of soda. I didn't want to be addicted to caffeine. I've gotten myself off. I'm trying to eat a lot better. I want to get healthy again. But I am going to treat myself to at least one more candy. This is shaped like a Japanese ramen -A bottle, and apparently it tastes like ramen -A. If you don't know what that is, it's worth looking up. Ramen-A. Uh, I happen to like those drinks quite a bit. I don't know what to expect out of this little pill. Oh, oh, it really tastes like ramen. -a. Sort of like a, a lemonade. Oh, that's delicious. All right, this is the best candy yet. Fake ramen. -a. Um, thanks everybody, but um, I guess I still need to choose a winner. I've got a slightly new way of doing it. This is courtesy of my sister. She just decided I needed a better system than putting pieces of paper in a bag. Yes, she got me a professional ball spinner. All the balls in here end with a number associated with the seven people that submitted artwork this week. So, spin it around. We're gonna pull, pull one of these out. And it is number 14, so I'll take the last part of that. That's number four. Let's see who number four was. Number four is Luke Hamilton. Luke, let's take a look at what you won. All right, we got this, and uh, it's another Hellboy Gachapon. If you would like to have your artwork featured on this channel, I would love to share it, as long as it has something to do with comic tropes. Just send it to comictropes at gmail.com. I'll be sure to feature it. Um, the prizes come out of the Gachapon machine that was donated to us by Lunar Shine Store. Um, I'm doing everything out of order because I am actually in the middle of a huge move. I'm moving to my new house and so this is actually, this set looks the same but I'm in a different part of the house. Uh, next time you see me I'm probably going to be recording in my new home. I've got like a studio that I'm building for uh, my YouTube show, an actual studio, like a whole room devoted to nothing but comic tropes. I'm very excited about that. Um, thank you very much for uh, following along, for doing things like hitting like and subscribe. Uh, that really helps a lot. Uh, you can also support me on Patreon or Coffee if you'd like. Uh, no pressure though. Uh, my Hero Academia is 
a fantastic manga. I just want to say a couple more things uh, just off the top of my head. Um, it's got great pacing. It's, it's really good. Uh, it will often have sort of light, humorous storylines that sort of um, buffer the huge, big arcs where Midoriya goes up against a supervillain. So the pacing's great. It just like always is like building, building, building with action, and then it like goes to something kind of funny, but you're not bored because that's when you get like all the character growth, you get some humor, and you know, you get to really see the repercussions of some of these things. Great pacing. I'm serious. It is awesome. And you know what? I actually have to thank a viewer for getting me into uh, My Hero Academia. In one of my first live art streams, I don't remember when, but I had a viewer, I believe she was from Mexico, named Karen. I hope I'm getting that right. She kept saying, like, I think you'd like this title. I think you'd like this title. And it stuck with me enough that I was like, maybe I would. And I tried it out, and I really do. I really do. Um, I don't read tons of manga, but this, this is one that every time there's a new Tonka Bon uh, album that comes out, I go and get it. This is really hot, by the way. So I'm taking that off. It's the real me. Um, anyway, it's, it's a really good uh, book, in my opinion. I give it a recommend. I've talked about how it can have some factors that might be holding it back from being great. Maybe there are too many characters. Um, so far, I don't think that's become an actual problem. I think it's a challenge, but I don't think it's a problem. Maybe someday it could be. I don't know. So far, there's plenty of focus on Midoriya in every episode, and the character growth of his classmates makes sense. Uh, and there's growth, of course, of his mentor, All Might, as well, and some of his other teachers. There's so many cool twists and turns I would love to get into, but really all I'd be doing there is recapping stuff and spoiling it for you. And that's not really what I wanna do. I just wanna talk about the techniques behind it. Um, I think that uh, it's a really great series. Haven't read any of the spin-offs personally. I just don't have that much time. I'd be curious. Uh, if you read any of the spin-offs or anything like that, reply in the comments below. Let me know what you think of things like Vigilantes or Smash. Um, let me know what you think of the anime. Uh, I've only watched the first two episodes. I, I don't have a lot of time for, for TV. I like reading a little bit more. So I've been focused more on the manga. Uh, I love the manga. I really do. It's one of my favorites right now. Anyway, appreciate you watching. I'll be back soon. And until that time, keep reading comics. Bye.